Hey there everyone, Almighty Zintaco here. Uh, this tutorial is going to be a quick tutorial on how to do a melee attack in a platform game. Um, we're going to make it simple this time. It's going to just be a punch. I'm going to do another video later that will show you how to do something separate like a sword attack or an axe, a weapon that you hold in hand. But right now it's just going to be a punch. And um, honestly though, you could extrapolate very easily and turn this into a sword or something. So um, with that said, um, a lot of people have been asking me questions and it's kind of getting out of hand. Um, trying to keep up with all the requests for help, but uh, it's getting tough. So um, if you look down in the description below, I have a Discord channel. You can go there and get all the help you need. There's lots of people there who will be willing to answer your questions and help you guys out. So uh, I will still try to stay on top of it and answer your guys' questions. But like I said, I have over 2,000 subscribers at the time I made this video, and it's getting kind of hard to keep up on it. Um, lastly, I'd like to apologize for my voice. I am recovering from strep throat. <clears throat> all right, so all that out of the way let's take a look at what the finished product will look like let's run the application hold on gotta resize move all the stuff that's in my way all right so we just have this little dude who runs back and forth you can press the x button and he will punch and here's an enemy we can hit and we can kill him by punching him so it's a relatively simple concept. Um, what we have here is uh, we are using the platform movement object. Um, this is going to use some code I'm not going to explain uh, for the basic platform movement object code. If you want to find out more about that, I have a tutorial series on how to do a platform game. Um, other than that, we have a few objects here. Let's go to the second frame I set up that doesn't have any code on it. So let me delete that guy. All right, so <clears throat> we have the platform movement object. Uh, we have a player here. Uh, and this guy has some animations on him. We also have a fist object, and we have an enemy. So the reason we have a fist object, if we look at the player object, we have a few animations. We have a stopped animation, we have a walking animation, and then we have the launching animation, which is the punch. And as you see here, the punch has a wind up, and then when he actually strikes, um, the fist is not part of the player. And the reason we are doing that is because we want the fist to be a separate object so that um, when the player strikes the enemy, he's actually not making contact with the enemy, the fist is. That way we can check collisions with the player and hurt the player for touching the enemy, but uh, still strike the enemy with the fist. So that's going to require us to uh, intelligently set up where we place this fist object. So let's go ahead and start coding. So right in here I got the uh, already set up platform movement object stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this comment. And we are going to add some more stuff here. So we're going to call this melee. Is it melee or melee? I don't know. You know, It's not really something I hear a lot. I think I just read it. Alright, melee stuff we will call it. So first thing we're going to need to do is always set this position of the fist to where we need it. Um, <clears throat> so, actually that's not going to be an always event. Uh, we're going to do that based on the direction of our, our uh, player object. So, we will go into the player object and look for his direction. That is under movement. No, that's under direction. Uh, so we're going to compare the direction of the player. If it is to the right, we are going to do something. If it's to the left, we are going to do something. All right, so if it's to the right, we are going to always set the position of the fist. We're going to select the position. We're going to make it relative to the player object. And we need to offset it. Um, now, I know because of where the hotspot is and everything that it's 67, roughly 67 pixels to the right. Um, you're going to need to play around with this to make sure that your fist lines up with your particular animation. So, um, yeah, it doesn't take long to, to mess around with it. All right, so we're going to drop this over in uh, the same event, or sorry, the same expression. We're going to drop it in the left facing. We're going to edit that. And that needs to be negative 67. <clears throat> All right. Now, let's go look at this and make sure the hotspot's in the right spot. All right. Um, this is another thing I changed. The hotspot is at the top. Um, like I said, all this is going to be relative to your particular graphics for your game. I have a left and right animation for this fist. OK. So that should set the fist position properly. Let's go ahead and check and see if it did. Oh, I ran the application. Let's run the frame. 
Okay, so we have a fist that follows at a proper offset from the player. But as you see, it's not, fa not facing the right direction. So we are going to set up an always event. <clears throat> and we are always going to set the direction of our fist. Click on the one plus one to calculate. And we are gonna grab the direction of our player. Um, that is under animation, current direction value. Okay. So um, now we, we'll go ahead and check it real quick. Should work though. All right, cool. Fist is aiming in the right direction. Now we don't want this fist to always be visible. Otherwise he's just gonna have a fist sticking in front of him and that's kind of stupid. So uh, we are going to actually make sure that this is not visible at start. So under, uh, under our display options, uncheck visible at start. So now we are going to want to trigger the attack animation. So let's go to the keyboard and we will say upon pressing a key, we're gonna make that the X key. So when we press the X key, we are going to change the animation of the player to the launching animation. Let's go ahead and test this. As you see, it's kind of spazzing out. And that's because if you see where I have up here, object is standing on ground and object is not moving, we are changing the animation sequence to stop. That's how we're triggering the stopped animation. So we're gonna go ahead and need to add another condition here to prevent this from calling whenever uh, we are playing the attack animation. So insert, go to the player, select the animation, which animation is playing, and that animation is launching. We're gonna negate that so now this will only trigger and change it to stopped when animation launching is not playing. So <clears throat> now it'll play launching whenever we press X. So let's try it again. All right, as we see, it is working perfectly. So um, now we see the fist is gone. We don't see it. So <clears throat> what we want to do is uh, we need to make that fist visible, but we need to make it visible at the right time. So if we look at the launching animation, it's frames two and three. Is that, so essentially after frame two is when we want uh, the fist to become visible. And then whenever the animation is no longer playing the launching animation, we will make it invisible. Uh, we don't want it on frame one, but even though the, the frames are listed as frame one, two, and three, um, for some reason, the frames are zero based on the index, which means that frame zero is actually frame one. So we need to make sure we keep that in mind. It's going to be frame what is listed as frame two here is actually frame one. So frame one is gonna be when we want to make the fist appear. So we will say under the player object, animation, which animation is playing, we're gonna make sure the launching is playing, and then <clears throat> go back to it, go to animation, um, compare current frame, it needs to be one. When that happens, we are going to make the fist visible. So go to uh, visibility make object reappear and now we need another event we're gonna go to the player object again we are going to say animation which animation is playing launching we're gonna negate that so essentially saying if launching is not playing then we want the fist to become invisible so go to visibility make object invisible all right let's give this one a test okay so we have a proper this punchy animation. Nothing happens here though. Kind of like that dude. He looks like a bull or something. He's supposed to be a demon. I don't know. I threw this art together pretty quick. All right. So um, <clears throat> now we need to um, actually hold on. Let me try this again. See if you, you can run while you're running and you press X, it kind of spazzes out. I don't like that. So we're going to fix that. Um, and what, what we're going to do is essentially add an exemption here up on lines four and five where it says repeat while, while right arrow and left arrow are pressed. That's how we're removing the character and setting up their animation. We're going to insert and we're going to make sure that we cannot do this um, if launching is playing. So only do that when launching is not playing. Copy that and paste it. So now it'll only do this when launching is not playing. When launching is playing, it will not let us move. So it's going to stop our character when we punch, but that's that's fine. It's really up to you how you want to do things in your own game. If you want to change that around and make it so your character can move and attack, you'll probably actually have to separate your character into a bottom half and a top half. Uh, otherwise, 
he won't be so you want to keep his feet running and then the top half could swing his his punch or whatever it's kind of how a lot of nintendo games did it had their characters separated in half so they could do that without making it look stupid otherwise his legs would be stopped and he would slide around okay so now we need to uh beat up the enemy here kill him so uh let's see here i already have some alterable values so you're gonna need to throw these in here you have a buffer value and a health value which we have set to five so <clears throat> Let's uh, copy the comment and throw it in here. We'll say hit enemy. All right, so we only want the attack to be triggered whenever the um, whenever the buffer is at zero because we don't want the um, enemy to take more than one hit at a time. We want to sort of have an invulnerability timer. And we also only want him to get hit not when the fist overlaps, but when the fist overlaps and is visible. When it's invisible, that's that's the frames that are not having the punch because you know the fist is always in front of our player anyway. So we're gonna say uh, collisions overlapping another object. Select the enemy object. So the fi when the fist is overlapping the enemy, we're gonna add another condition. Go to the enemy. Alterable values compared to the alter value. We want to make sure that uh, this happens when not health when buffer equals zero. And lastly, we want this to trigger whenever the uh, fist is visible. So go to visibility under fist and ask if it is visible. Um, so when that happens, that means we have punched our enemy. <clears throat> so uh, we want to set the alterable value on the enemy of buffer to zero. And we want to subtract one from the health. So subtract from health one. Um, and we want to play a sound effect because he's getting punched in the head. So we need a nice sound effect. So let's go to samples, play sample. And I already have a smack sound effect uh, inserted, but you can go ahead and browse from a file or something. So boom. All right. So now we're also going to need to make sure that this buffer always counts to zero when it's not zero. So we will ask if the buffer value under the enemy is... Um, is greater than zero and when it's greater than zero we are going to subtract one from it um wait i made a mistake i apologize we don't want to set the buffer to zero whenever we punch go up to this where it says set buffer buffer to zero this is a value that we want to set it to and which is going to count down from to reach zero so this is essentially setting the timer of our invulnerability for the uh, enemy. The, the higher this is, the longer that's going to be. 100 should be, you know, I mean, it depends on the frame because this, uh, the frame rate of your application. I think mine is 60. So, I mean, 60 would be roughly a second. So, um, we don't really want a second though. We'll make it 30, half a second of invulnerability. All right, so now we need to queue up some animations for our little enemy dude. And we're going to do this based on the buffer. When he's invulnerable, meaning he has been struck and he can't be struck again, I'm going to make him cry. So we will go to alterable values, compare. <clears throat> we want to find out if buffer is greater than zero. And um, go ahead and copy this, paste it. We're going to edit this. And we also want to find out if buffer equals zero. So when buffer is greater than zero, then um, that is when he has been hit. And we want to change his animation to crying. We obviously could have stuck it over here as well. It's the exact same event. But sometimes I like to make copies of events that do different things just because, you know, logistically it's a separate idea. It makes it easier for people to see. All right, so um, multiple values. Wait, no, sorry, animation. Change animation sequence. We're going to change it to bouncing, which is his hit attack, or his hit uh, animation where he's been hit. And then the other one, we're changing the animation to uh, stops. <clears throat> All right, lastly, we need to destroy him. Destroy him. Uh, and then we're going we're gonna to have a, uh, an effect. We're going to need to insert an object for that effect. So I'm going to throw another active object in here. We're going to rename this. Let me resize that. That's way big. We're going to call it FX uh, Boom. All right, I'm going to import this right quick. I'm going to grab it from a different game. It is a TNT animation. I'm going to make it about uh, 18 frames a second. Alright, so now we need to find out if his health is zero and then we're going to kill him. We're going to make it uh, lower or equal or equal or lower than zero. So um, so that way we can't like skip it. In a, not animation, where is it? Alterable values, compare, 
grab health, we want to find out if it's lower or equal to zero. If that is the case, then we want to create our effect, our boom effect, relative to the enemy. <clears throat> and we want to destroy the enemy. And lastly, whenever this FX uh, has finished its animation, we want to clean it up and get rid of it. So go to um, has an animation finished and that animation was stopped. We are going to destroy this FX. Uh, let me see. Is that everything? That is indeed should be everything. Let's find out. So we can walk around. We can punch. Feel bad for him. All right. So that that's pretty much all we need to do to have a uh, fist attack. And like I said, you can you can fairly easily like it's not much harder to make this into a sword or something. You'd only need to uh, have a second uh, animation for the sword and kind of overlay it and based on where his hands are at, play it. It's the exact same concept. But I am going to probably do some more weapon types and and put them in this series I'm going to call like the melee series or the weapon series or something. Anyway, um, thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will as always try to get back to you guys. If you have any bugs in your games that you would like me to try to fix in my bug uh, fixing series, then please send that to zentacoproductions at gmail.com. And uh, as soon as I get another one of those compiled, I will, if it's a good bug, I'll put it in there. And like I said, if you have any uh, questions or comments and I can't get to you in time, if you're trying to figure something out, go to my Discord channel. It'll probably uh, help you guys get things done quickly. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, thanks for sticking with me for 2,000 subscribers. You guys all have a great day. I will see you next video.